we will be talking about pathogenesis of osteomyelitis. The possible routes of infection can be either hematogenous from septic focus like a boil or a sore throat. Or it can follow direct inoculation from an open fracture or a surgery. It can also spread from the infection of the adjacent sites like odontogenic infections leading to the osteomyelitis of the jaw. Edema and pus formation from acute inflammation leads to significant rise in the intramedullary pressure. This leads to vascular collapse resulting in ischemic necrosis of the bone. The pressurized focus of infection can also force its way to the bone cortex and ultimately under the periosteum which can separate the it from the underlying bone leading to further compromise of the bone's vascular supply contributing to bone ischemic necrosis. Particularly in children where bone and periosteum are loosely adhered, the infection can generate subperiosteal abscesses or spread along subperiosteal planes into adjacent joints. In adults, the infection can dissect through the periosteum and generate sinus tracts to the skin. With progression to chronic osteomyelitis, pieces of dead necrotic bone, termed sequestra can be observed with shells of reactive bone forming around them, termed involucra, representing a healing response aimed at isolating foci of infection from surrounding healthy bone. Common organisms causing acute osteomyelitis are Staphylococcus aureus, Escherichia coli, Streptococci, Pseudomonas and Salmonella in cases of sickle cell disease, Haemophilus influenza, Group B Streptococci and mixed infection in cases of inoculation. Salmonella osteomyelitis is common in sickle cell disease due to hyposplenism, complement deficiency and bowel infarction leading to translocation of Salmonella.